Hello everybody, this is Fastest Thing Alive. And this is Torch from FunTheComputerVoom.com. And uh, we're here to talk to you about an event that took place... Uh, I think it was a, it may be a, mu a month ago. A little thing you may have heard it called a Summer of Sonic. Now some of you may be wondering... Um, uh, basically we said that we'd be making a mm -hmm. documentary about the uh, the big day. And of course, nothing has come of that yet. Um, reason for that is, is about um, two weeks before we went to the event, I had actually spent about a grand buying a a pretty decent camera, and then <laughs> test it all fine. And then the morning of the day, yep. I go to <laughs> my house. I, I my guys house. I got to test with camera and, and everything. The the damn thing wouldn't work. It would it would record, but in playback. The playback would not essentially play back, as it were. Which um yeah, well, this is what you get from leaving it to the last minute, don't you? <laughs> I tested it. Well, <laughs> I tested it my house for it. Yeah, that that pissed me off. And then for the entire train ride there, I was just incredibly pissed off. Um, so because essentially that essentially put a crimp in our plans of oh, I know we can interview people and make a pretty decent documentary. To be fair, what you said on the day was absolutely fair. I'll get to that though. Yeah. We'll get to that. Mike jumping ahead of the gun. All right, you got. Jeez, fine. No I'll, sense. Ju I'll just sit here in the corner. No and let you sense let you, of storytelling. You know, story go off on one like you don't. normally do. Yeah, because again, I'm the one with all the interesting facts. You just sit there. Your 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 input in a conversation is hmm yeah. Mainly because you spend most of your time talking about voice actors, which doesn't interest me in the slightest. All I tend to do is just you know talk about um, the actual about games and stuff and the is gameplay. What, is what's on screen. It's like, oh look, he's he's got powering ears. Good, good for him. All right. Yes, uh, that's right. exactly what I say all the time. Isn't it? I think your father it's keeper of the time stones. Well done, Michael. Well done. You uh, repeat a character's name. Tell oh, you what, we're uh, going to go back and do a commentary on our commentaries, and we can I don't know if you just go through it and tell you how much of a muppet you are in some of them. And and we could just see. Okay, this is going way off topic there. Um, <laughs> essentially, yeah. So um, we get we get there, and there's a I think we were about twenty people in front of us or yeah, so. We're yeah, right in there, like and uh, we get there, and you know, there's a bunch of people in um Sonic fans. I I still say because it it dawned on me. But half an hour before we got there, the greatest thing we should have done is turned up there dressed as the Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been genius. Just Absolutely. like, all right, guys, this is the uh, Mario Bros. convention, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, there was some weird guy going around taking uh, photos of all of our T-shirts. Yeah. I, I, I don't I, know what that was about. I dread to think what that man's doing with those photos with now. Pictures really of of it. you know. People in Sonic T-shirts, you sick freak! Essentially, um, we're standing in the queue, and well, <laughs> essentially they said it starts at ten. We get there, we get into it, with well, the doors open about half past ten, which you know, fair enough, because we get in there, mm. we're given a free bag with some with a free T-shirt, free Sega pens, a Sega badge, a Sega sticker. Uh, a single Sonic suite. I I I say mint that says I love Sega. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, then eventually we get in and we have to uh, we have to sign in. Basically we have to you know um, say prove we had signed on the official website. So I go head on my hands first, this thing alive. And um, this has happened to me three times over the course of the day. I said hello, my name's fastest this thing alive, and I got some sniggering. And I said, I said, I assure you, it's nothing to do with my sexuality. It's based, you know, you know, so I am, you know, fastest thing alive. And everyone was like, huh, huh. I was like, damn you all. And then essentially, what's kind of funny happened is that um, I, I my name was on there, but I think from the start they wasn't quite sure if I if I had a plus one. So mm. I, I basically so just, I was just standing there. I going basically mm. just just I basically just walked in, and, <laughs> and I I left torch to kind of just stand there going, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> but yeah, essentially we got in, and um, that's that's when we first dawned that the prospect of a, a documentary probably wouldn't have worked because. Oh, I'm allowed to speak now. Yeah, thank I'll, I'll you. I'll Grand give Master. you. I'll give thank you this. You. I'm not your grandfather. Grandmaster. Anyway, forget it. There was just it was a tiny, tiny room. Um, well, I wouldn't say uh, it, well, it, it wasn't it tiny, was, tiny, no, but it, it wasn't bad. But everyone expected it to be bigger. 
Yeah. <laughs> Everyone expected it to be bigger, and um, the amount of people that were in there, or p people that were going in there, they had to stop uh, letting everybody in to um, sort of ration people. So as one person came out, another person came in. Also, because of, of the uh, the size and the amount of people, the um. It, it was quite hard to hear people, and essentially, mm. if if I would have taken a camera there, very very possible, because I I didn't I didn't have I don't have a proper boom stick. Um, very possible that if I was to just interview people at close range, that the sound sound of them and probably the sound of me or Mike would have been drowned out just just by the amount of of background noise. Not to mention the amount of pushing and shoving that you would have endured with mm. people around you as well. But in terms of what stuff that was there, there was um everything was broken it down into nice little zones. There was a uh, something like refreshment hill zone or something. Yeah, yep, we got um. A couple of Sonic cakes and uh, drink yeah. drinks and things for free, which was pretty uh, nice. Yeah, actually, it was you know very nice. Then there was the, of course the um, the main stage, the main stage, and the um, the games booth where people were spending the day trying to uh, beat the fastest goal on um, Sonic Two. Mm -hmm. I went there essentially. I knew I wasn't gonna beat th beat it because I haven't played Sonic Two in ages, and I've on like the Sonic Stadium, people were like, yeah, I've been training. For Weeks I've been training for days, yeah. you know. I've been missing school, and you know, my wife wants to, wants to leave me because of all the time I'm spending on this. And I was just like, okay. I, I, I ain't played the game in like a year, so I'm probably <laughs> not gonna win. But I wanted to go there because I'd heard that they were handing out the um, Guinness World Records for free. Yep. So I was like, I was like, I played it. Can I can I have my book now? And they're like, Nope. I was like, What? But I've been told I get a free book. They were like, Nope. I was like, Screw you. <laughs> um, my score I think was a in. An embarrassing 35 seconds for Emerald Hills on Act One. Granted, I only had one goal because I only did one goal to get the book. And <laughs> so well, same, and mine was 50 something. So you got me. 50 no something. Yeah. Damn, Mike, you suck. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, um, then there was the um, queue to play. There, the secret rings was um, attached to mm -hmm. the room, as well as um, that was something else, wasn't there? On oh. Yeah. No, 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 not Chronicles. Um, there was something else next to the um, Sonic Two. Oh yes, there was a. Um, I believe it was, was it a Sonic Three D. No, it was. It was. Um, the. V I think it was the. It was a. Oh, cross. It was um Sonic Three. A lot of people were playing the time trial mode. Oh yeah, yeah. And then of course the big thing was the big queue to play Sonic Chronicles: The Dark Brotherhood. Um, I think both of us. How many times did you play it? I only uh, got on it once, pretty much the second I got in, because I could tell there would have been a massive queue for it after. Yeah, because I remember one, you could have fed up, but I was queuing up for the um, the Sonic 2 stage because mm. I, I wanted to get the book. Yeah. So I was like, I'll get the book, man! And then, <laughs> as you find out later, we'll, f we'll find out what will happen with the books, mm -hmm. but yeah. In one of our podcasts, we uh, talked a little bit about Chronicles and what we thought about it. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, from the amount of time we spent on it, we really can't make a judgment. But uh, the game system seems very much like the Final Fantasy uh, 3 system that they put on the DS as well, in terms of how they move characters about. You use the stylus to move uh, Sonic around. Yeah, well, which is which is exactly like Phantom Hourglass. Um, something stuff like I obviously it's a um, RPG. RPG obviously with um, with it has stuff like um, team based attacks, which is very similar to the turn based. Turn based. No, and also partner based, where you like you team up. With um like two characters can combine to attack together, which is of course oh very right, similar okay, yeah. to the um Mario Brothers Partners in Time um series. Another thing is like if you play games like like Pokemon, you have the option to run run away. Also for first, the actual opponent actually has the option to run away as well. And unlike other games, um you have to physically run away, and then you also ha you can also have the option to chase them, which is it, it's all about oh, you, have nice. to, you have to run and you have to like um. Dodge like <laughs> dodge boxes that just happen to be in the road, and if you hit them, you slow down. Which again, I think as you mentioned before, I was stuck behind some little twerp playing for like 20 minutes. I think this was the same guy that was on uh, just uh, in the queue behind me. He was standing over my shoulder the entire time, telling me exactly what to do. No, no, you don't want to attack him with that. Attack him with. That. I think he must have downloaded a demo or something for it. And so at the end of it, I just thought, right, screw this, you gotta go. I was just standing <laughs> because I just remember thinking that like first it was just me. Then I was like, I don't mind waiting, you know, kids having fun. But then it, it was only when there was like literally ten people behind me and like they were getting annoyed. I was like, kid, mate, how long you been on this? I was, I didn't have a go at him. I just asked him how long he'd been on it because I, I knew he'd been over fifteen minutes. But then he was like, oh, I'm sorry. 
I left, and because of, because of the big queue, I basically played one fight and then went away. Yeah. Just because I couldn't be bothered to stand there. Because I'm lazy like that. <laughs> I mean, it does look to be a fairly good game. I mean, I'm definitely going to buy it as soon as it comes out. But, uh... Hell yeah. Mm. Um, there was the, uh, the art contest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I entered and didn't win. Uh, who was it the one who was not a five? How old was the kid? Like five or six, wasn't he? I think it was like seven. Whereas I said, I said to Michael that he said he can't draw. So I said, dude, all you gotta do is draw it and then <laughs> put Michael Jones, you know, age, age four, five. and you'd win. I oh, know. <laughs> the problem is that nobody has to get up onto stage to receive my prize, and uh, me walking onto stage, I just get booed off straight away. <laughs> it would have been hilarious. Yeah, it would have been hilarious, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I still say, I still say my Saturday and picture should have won. There's one great picture though, with some guy, he drawn three different Sonics. He, he was like, he was Adventures, he was like Adventures Robot, Sonic with the Re Adventures Robotnik, the Saturday and Sonic with the Saturday and Robotnik, mm. and the Game Sonic and Game Robotnik. I was like, that's genius. Three, I mean, I can, I can barely draw games on it, and this guy could perfectly draw the three different versions. You did have a lot of uh, professional artists there as well that sort of drew for websites and things like that. It was that what's a called Dark Speed or something, some Australian yeah. guy who kept on <laughs> who kept on trying to get on the stage. He was like <laughs> every time someone mentioned his name he like really like ran down to the stage to try and get on it and people were like, No mate, we don't want you on the stage, what are you doing? Oh yeah yeah I, <laughs> I just remember it. I think I think it was I think it was when um Endless Possibilities came on. Him and me can had some kinda we like looking at each other and singing at the same time. Like the weirdest thing, like I'd never met the guy before my life. I was like, oh, I see it, and he was like, I see it, and now we had some of it in my reach. It was just weird. And then, <laughs> uh, and then after that, we went in, into the bathroom and shared an experience that I'll never forget. <laughs> oh dear. Go what? on then. You know, you, know, you, know, you know you want to say it. What? Oh well, yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. My my meeting of two people in the toilet. Yeah, that's, um, your, that's your claim to glory. My claim to fame, that is. What else happened? Then, um, then there was the trivia contest, which I still maintain I would have won that because I knew all the questions and I knew them before everyone on stage did. <laughs> it's like oh, I would have won that, man. Mm. There was also a um, SA2 battle contest, which um, only like four people were allowed to take part. Apparently, it was weird. Four people had already been can picked. To, like, I think that was like the final. That was like I think I, I, from what I'd heard from people there, the, the four people there were finalists from something. From somewhere at some point. Yeah. Oh well. Um, what else? You won the one anyway, Mike. Oh, I, I want to go back to the trivia contest. Of course, the um, big thing in that was there was some some little kid. Some it was like it was like the cockiest little kid, but like he, he was like the kid. He was like the kid. He, this, you, was, this was the kid in Tails cosplay, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like the, the worst cosplay I've ever seen in my life. It was like he was just wearing like an orange T-shirt. That was it. And he, but it was like it was like it was like the cockiest little kid you've ever seen in your life. But then it was between him and this girl called Helen. Well, I say girl, she's 24, Christ's sake. Um, it's just a girl called Helen. And um, essentially, what happens that it was a sudden death between those two. Yep. She won it, and like he was giving it to him, and she was like, "Oh, I don't. He can have it. I already have two at home." And everyone in like, the the room just just been like. Oh, it was like a panel crowd or something. I know. It was like the nicest thing. Like if it was in me, it was. If, if it had been me, I would have been like, screw you, kid. I got one. Oh, but screw it, I got another one. That's e going on eBay. Oh, eBay, this bastard. There, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's like the, I didn't like, um. I think you and me started. There's another point where you and me were just standing there, like, well, it was it was before because essentially when you get there, you have all the things you've just um described, but. It, you, you, you literally had that for about three hours before they did any events. Yeah. So at about the hour and a half mark, you and me were just standing there like, well, now what? So we trip again for, for like Chronicles? Nah, I'm alright. Do you want to draw some more? Nah, I'm alright. I can't draw. Should we stand here? Alright. All I did for half of the thing was just um, walk over to the small area which had all the um, websites posted up. And all I did was just wipe down all of them. So uh, as soon as we get the site for money, we'll have a few more affiliates to put on. Yeah. And then, yeah, we were standing there, Helen just like literally turned to us and said, Oh, what? I was like, yeah, so we started uh, speaking to uh, her, and I think, oh, what, what was her friend called again? I forget. Ah. Oh. oh, she can kill me now, I can't remember. Either. Something the Echidna, what was it? What was it? Oh. 
Hannah. 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 That's the one. Hannah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a long pause. Uh, so, yeah, we just suck. And those two, they seem like. Nice. Uh, we basically. Well, we've got one of them on the forum. We've got both of them on the forum. Good tune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially. Well, basically, whenever we met someone we started speaking to, we were, we were just like, join the forum, join the forum, <laughs> just join push, them forum. Onto, push them onto the side. That's all we went there for, just to get more members, really. Yeah, but we, we should have planned a bit on like, on the like, <laughs> cards and crap, but no, we didn't. So yeah, then essentially, then, then what happened was, um, the first big guest star to arrive was Nigel, was Nigel Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, because like, Sonic the comic was literally, it's the only comic I've actually subscribed to and read like religiously when I was a mm. kid growing up I actually used to always get it. it was start, um, then when he came in luckily I was by the table there would set up for him so when he came over before he officially started starting stuff I was able to chat to him for like five minutes I, I started speaking to him like I said I told him like um my because when I was a kid my brother collected a few of them mm. he, collected, he, he got like the first 50 issues and then he stopped and then I stopped but then my, the first issue that I got was a the first part of a genius free free issue art called Running Wild, where um, Sonic in, is, is infused with chaos energy and turns to a supersonic. Of course, for those you know, the Sonic the comic supersonic is actually mm. just a evil mind. He's like he's like a mindless killing machine. It is literally his only purpose is to kill. It's like the Doctor Jekyll Mr Hyde type thing. Kind of yeah, because it. And also, yeah, because at that point, at that point, they were still in the same body, mm. which we'll probably get onto that on a later day. But yeah, just and he goes after Amy Rose, and I started speaking to him, and he's like, he was, he actually said, "Running Wild" was one of his most favourite story arcs mm. he ever wrote. So now, thinking about it, it goes, uh, kind of goes along the same lines as Unleashed, doesn't it? Kind the of. Where yeah. the werehog? Well, a little I, bit. Well, I, I, well, Maybe because oh, we 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 don't know if as the werehog if he is actually a unstoppable machine. Mm, for all, for all we know, he's still Sonic. He just looks like him. Cause <laughs> have yeah. you have you seen any of the in-game footage of the werehog? I think I've seen that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> they still use like normal Sonic voice clips. Really? Like this big monster like destroying crap. He's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. It's like I hope I hope to God that is just like a, a demo. I hope to God they fix that. I think it's you know, <laughs> just like you just imagine like cause I think it's confirmed the werehog. Sonic meets Amy at some point, just like the werehog. Yo, Amy, long time no see. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it was it was great chatting in Nigel kitchen, <laughs> um, just talking about like all the different. <laughs> I, you I, to draw something for you in the end, I you? got to ask him a question because I said to him, um, uh, a character called Johnny Lightfoot is literally the only character in the Sonic the Comic Universe to die. Mm. And for those of you, when we, we open a start, we're going to put all the STC um, archives on the site. And in the very last issue, they have a, um, it opens with like a free page interview with the guy. We talked about his experience with, with the comic book, and he talks about this quote where he says, "Yeah, G um, Johnny died. It, it was nothing against Johnny. You understand? It. I just felt one character ne needed to not survive. Yeah. But that <laughs> entirely contradicts with a quote that I had heard on like a forum years ago. Where literally, it was quoted as Nigel Kitchen saying, "Johnny is boring. Therefore, Johnny must die." <laughs> and I was able to ask him that, and he was essentially just went. Yeah, that's true. Actually, he's a boring character. <laughs> 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 I also asked him about because um, I think like 1999 there was a Sonic special where in the um, Johnny Lightfoot um, character profile, there's a bit where he says something like um, he he secretly fancies Amy, and I was able to ask him that because it's it was hinted at, but like nothing was established from it, and he he just basically said there wasn't enough time because. I won't go into it now, but he essentially got quit and fired about five times over the course of the, of the, of the run. He would mm. get quit, leave, come back for a bit, get quit, fire, get fired or quit again. And yeah, in Natural Kitchen, like, I must have bugged him like six times. I, like, I got him to sign two of my comics, I went back to get him to sign my shirt, I went back again to get him to... Because like, at some point he was at God, because um, for those you don't know, he was a major writer, but he also was, he did um, art on some of the um, stories. Mm -hmm. So he, was, he actually was drawing people's stuff, he drew me a, um, a Sonic head, and it looks just like Richard Elson, the, the main artist. Didn't you say he was doing it sort of in his style? 
because it was they're both working on the comic at the same time together. Oh so yeah, they're, well both they're both were working. And in fact, he he actually told me because he said the first thing he ever did was um uh, the front cover, and he said he was trying to emulate El- Elson's work. <laughs> yeah. The best thing was though, it's like some people were asking for Sonic because he knew how to draw it. And got the back to Helen for a second. I remember Helen asked him to draw knuckles, and he was like, "Oh Christ, how do I do that?" <laughs> and so like, I, I actually got out an, an issue of the comic card on me and showed him. So he started sketching knuckles, right? And normally, like well, like me, well, like everyone who asked to draw him was Sonic, he just he just drew a head. Mm. He actually went out and drew like a full, like proper, like full knuckles body and everything. I was like, "Christ, I should have asked him to draw me in knuckles." <laughs> like, essentially, he spends literally ten minutes drawing this thing, right? Yeah. And by the end, he's done. Helen's head, head pissed off. <laughs> She's like walked yeah, off. She's, off She's like walked off somewhere. And he's like he just looks up and goes, "Oh, where's she gone?" <laughs> he's like, "Hello, girl, where have you gone?" <laughs> Education. And then um, the first guest to um, enter was, of course, uh, no, the, 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 the first three musical guests, or rather, to enter was, of course, uh, Bentley Jones, right? He's more commonly known the Brotherton, and some people may know this. <laughs> Essentially. I had gone into the toilet to um, use the facilities. I came out of the cubicle <laughs> and I had like this kind of like average skinny guy with like long ginger hair. And I, the only reason I know is because I'd seen his picture on on the um, Sonic Stadium website. Mm. So I, I kind of stare him for a second and he's looking at me. It's like one of the things where like he can tell that I know something. It's like Lee, Lee Brotherton and he kind of looked at me and was like, yeah. I said, holy crap! And his face was like, oh god, get me out of here, get me out of here. <laughs> and he was like, whoa! And he was like, oh, and then it was literally like an awkward silence of 10 seconds, and then I'm like, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll let you um, use the toilet. He's like, thank you, that's what I came in for. <laughs> and then, like, later, I think I said this probably later on oh, in, in, in the show when I was going to get an autograph. Like, some people were like introducing themselves, saying, like, you know, like, Lee, I love your work, you know, Dreams of, of an Absolution, like, best song I've ever heard in my life. I love your remix of, of, of the gun theme. Mm. How did I do it myself? I lay it on the guy who scared you in, in the toilet. He's <laughs> like, oh, yeah, security. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then, dear. um, yeah, the big thing was, of course, the big, the big musical act of, uh, Ben, well, the, the main thing, of course, was Bentley Jones came on and did a little um, version of Dreams of, of an Absolution. Mm. And then um, Richard, J- I, can, I can never pronounce his name. Richard Jock, Richard yeah. Jack, uh, Jean. Jean, is that no, it? No, it's got a K in it. Jean. We'll just say Richard Jock. If we're wrong, sue us. Of course, Richard. Or not. Well, yeah, pl- wow. please don't. <laughs> You said his name wrong, I'm going to sue you. Well, you've right. got no money. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, um, he was a Sonic composer who was first introduced for um, the Saturn version of um, Sonic 3D Flicky's Island and was later brought back to do work on um, Sonic R. Did the music and the songs and his latest thing, he was brought in to work on um, Sega Superstar Tennis. But as he goes on, and um, I think it's just because I, I was raised on the Mega Drive version and I'm just a Junsi new enthusiast that I, 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 I much prefer the Mega Drive score for 3D Blast than the Saturn version. How about you, Mark? Mm, bearing in mind that I don't really, haven't really played these games in ages. Um, I'm a Mega Drive hardcore fan, man. Mm. But though he's playing, he did stuff like, um, he did Rusty Ruin. He did um, Diamond Dust Zone, but like I, I, I feel like the to me I was a bit disappointed because one of the ones that I really love and a no-brainer would have been to do his version of Green Grove because essentially um, Richard Payne he he's just performing with essentially a keyboard mm. and and some pre-recorded backing tracks, yeah. which to me made no sense because Green Grove Zone is literally all piano. Oh, we forgot, we forgot. He opened though. He opened with a Sonic the Hedgehog one medley. Yeah. Green, that like Green Hill Zone, Marble Zone, Spring Light, Starlight Zone. Just it sort of went through the entire game. Really, it was it? It's essentially he he essentially played the the credit theme from Sonic One when they actually used bits from every level. Mm. Which is like cr- genius, man, genius. Um. Uh, unlike the others, we never really got a chance to speak to. I think, well, he didn't start science after to the very end. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we were waiting around for ages just to get for um, him, yeah. shirts and things signed. Um, but I do remember when I went out to him, I, I did get to get the um, chance to actually tell him because even though I say that I, I, I prefer the um, Mega Drive version, one track from the Saturn just, just hands down kicks the Mega Drive version's ass, And that is of course Volcano Valley. It's just one of the most epic tracks ever. I, I, I said, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to like, lie to the guy. I said, I love your work, but I saw, I saw him said, you know, Volcano Valley is genius. <laughs> he, he was like, he thought for a second, he was like, that's Sonic 3D, thank you. And then I kind of took the guy's hand and was on my wife. But I, I'm, I'm not sure, what, 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 what would you say, Mike, was your, was the highlight of, of, the, of the day for you? Probably even my photo taken with that Robotnik. Oh, the cosplay of yeah, there was a some <laughs> there was, a, there was, was some girl brilliant. who just took the idea of cosplay to a whole friggin' new level. It was fantastic. She turned up in a complete proper robotic cosplay suit. Mm. I mean, we, we both got pictures taken of her. Yeah. It was great, but for me, the, the 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 actual highlight of the show was when the singer T.J. Davis, who um, was the singer for Sonic R, when she went into um, she did a live concert with um, Richard Jock and she sang my favourite song from that game, um, Candy Food of Sunshine. I'm not even even joking, like her performance of Candy Food of Sunshine was just so breathtakingly beautiful. That's one of the things that I'm actually gonna take with me to my grave. <laughs> was her before I'm not even jo- no, I'm not even joking. I was just literally standing there like Gorping. Gorping. It's like Jesus Christ, that is like the that is just Beautiful singing, just like, it literally blew me away. How good her voice was live. It made me think while we were there because um, everybody was it was obviously a Sonic fan and obviously knew all the music there. It must be weird for these people that are just coming in and getting on stage, and then they're a massive celebrity when they're in the room. Yeah. And then, and because like, I I really don't wish to knock any of these performers because obviously oh, yeah. genius, but like I I I'm assuming you know if if they were to go to like. A music festival, mm. you know, they they they'd, they'd probably had, you know, the, I think people might not know who who they are. Once they start playing, they'd obviously get some respect. But it's like going into there, yeah, it's like like it's like you know, I, I'd imagine they're not used to it. At it's all, like just these brought into these it guys, it. It's, it's, you know, like T J Davis, right? I I I I, I don't think I'm offended by saying probably not a, a well known singer mm. walks in here, right? Britney Spears comes in. Get lost, Britney, you bitch. We got T.J. <laughs> Davis. <laughs> we don't need you. <laughs> it's like, gee, but seriously, who can you feel the sunshine? And of course, the biggest surprise came when, um, at the end, Lee Brotherton returned to the stage once again and informed mm-hmm. us that that during the um, production of the Sonic 06 music tracks, he was a, um, I think he was a non-credit producer on his world. And he actually went into a little rendition called the His World Blue World Prelude, which is the official theme of Summer of Summer 2008, which was like, no one expected it. No one knew no. who was going to come out and... He just he and got up there and started singing. It was like, oh, brilliant. It was great. And then he, he, he put it on um, the Summer of Summer website for a free download, which was just... Mm-hmm. You know, um, f- f- for my mind, because it's, it's a... It's a very different version of his world. It's very slow. It's like there's like no, no guitars. It's like a very slow version. It's, it would. It's more of a gentle one. The you know trying to it's, it's a very hard rock. Version. It's it's a very nice contrast to basically every mm. other version, with the exception of like when you hear it in um, wishing upon the Chaos Emeralds and the Space Time Rift. Essentially, when those are like slow violin versions, this is a very slow. S- Song version, which I think it's it's a nice contrast, to like the it's a nice contrast, to like the over the top rap sections of, of like the Zebrahead version. But I think it works. Too. I think it yeah, works great. Yeah. Didn't he say he's gonna uh, put that on his new album? I think so. Yeah, I think Bob his Trump. his his Bentley Jones album. Yeah, which actually for some of you who may not know Bentley Jones's work, um, he started in um, Shadow the Hedgehog, doing stuff like the. Um, Heavy Dog remake, the Heavy Dog remix of the gun track, essentially, of course, in SA2, when you fight the gun, well, would you get that? Essentially, um, he did a remix of that called Heavy Dog for Shadow the Hedgehog. Essentially, the the difference is the um the gun version in SA2 uses a pre-programmed drumming track, like it's it's not a real drumming. It's like it sounds like. 
his version is essentially he's using a live drum kit, which yeah. it, it makes it sound better, it just does. Um, he's responsible for the Eggman remix in that game, which is... is isn't it only in that one cutscene? That so yeah, it's only in a cutscene, but it was it was um, fleshed out into a full length track for the um, yeah. soundtrack Lost and Found. But it's you know it's the bit where Eggman he's, he's isn't it? He finds it in the um, one of the cyber zones when isn't it when Shadow meets him in the cyber? No, no, no. It's it's, it's played it's played in um, a cutscene where basically you see Eggman at a computer looking at Black Doom destroying crap. But like those idiots, they destroy everything. How am I supposed to create the Eggman Empire? And there's nothing left, you know, so, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. something along those lines. Um, so yeah, then he started singing. He he seemed like a really nice guy, actually. Because mm. again, I think I bothered him about four times to get different stuff signed and stuff. But also there was this really nice bit I remember when um I was in line, right, and some some like girl came up to him and was like, "Hi, my friend wants to meet you, but but, but she's really shy." And he was like, "Oh," so like he went over to this girl and like gave her a hug and stuff. It was like really nice. Like oh bless, but I was like wait a minute, wait a minute, I was next bitch, you cut in line. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, then of course there was the time we should say that when we first got in there, we were all given raffle tickets, and then at the end of the, the end of the day, there was a big raffle, and mm-hmm. we, Christ, we knew we we, we weren't going to get jack in that. I mean, yeah. but this is like I've always been a bit iffy on the subject of karma. But to that day, it kind of made brilliant. me think that it could because everyone was. Uh, so if, if it was brilliant at right If the we ju- jump in the gun, essentially, um, there was loads of like raffles. The thing that annoyed a lot of people there was that about some people who who had left by the time the the thing mm. had ended were winning. And I think it's literally two different people mm. who had left won two sets of prizes because mm-hmm. there was because one of the guys who r- who ran the thing I think he actually works for Sega so they were able to get all this free Sega stuff like posters games and stuff mm. um, they all put it into different bundles and they handed them out and it was like Christ man everyone's winning stuff but us this sucks <laughs> <laughs> well there was the thing was that we didn't realise that you could actually go in and buy raffle tickets but I didn't see them being uh, handed out at any point yeah, did I but so there were people that had, you know, obviously spent 10-20 yeah. quid on some of these tickets yeah. and there were people getting like four and five they, goodie bags and they didn't win at anything either haha mm. <laughs> suckers <laughs> but essentially there was um, there was one massive one at the end where we had like seven games and a very exclusive white Sega laptop bag that mm-hmm. only people who work for Sega can get and well, there's another DS and... Uh, oh, yeah, DS and... Uh, and guess who, who won it. It's just... It was just like... Helen. It's, it's just it's like... The, it's the best karma. No, it's, it's like, seriously... I think... Everyone agreed they couldn't have been happier even if they'd won it themselves. Mm. It was just like... Uh, like, yeah, she deserved to win. <laughs> it was like, cry. And, like, the nicest thing is that... Because uh, I was standing next to her when she got it. She was, like, looking through her... Game. She, she won, she won, like, um... Mario or like the Olympic games, like a Secret Rings of the Way, yeah. stuff like some Xbox games, some PS3 games, and PS2 games. She said, you know, she, she asked me what consoles I had. I said, you know, I got Wii, PS2, blah blah blah. She was like, do you have this game? I was like, yeah. She was like, do you have this game? I was like, yeah. She said, do you have this game? I was like, no. She said, join it. I was like, all right. The the <laughs> the bad thing is the the game she offered me was Sonic Riders 2, <laughs> but I felt. <laughs> I felt it would have been really rude if I would actually that game's a bit of shit to be honest. I don't really <laughs> so I think it's like it's like the nicest thing mm. in the world. Mm. Uh, but as apparently though from what I've from what I've heard, apparently every game that either she already had or was for a console she didn't have, she gave out to somebody on the day. Yeah. And I thought they scrape it where a little kid who'd won something earlier. Um he was like, Yeah, we we're, we're, mm-hmm. we're waiting for stuff to happen he like taps me on the shoulder. And he was, I was like, yeah? He goes, excuse me, mate, do you have an Xbox? Do you have an Xbox? I don't, and I could clearly see he was going to give it away. Yeah. But I thought, well, you know, better not lie, this, there might be somebody here who could actually use it. And then I thought, wait a minute, Mike has an Xbox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, Mike, he's like, yeah, you want this game? All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was brilliant. It was, what was it? It was the um, Sonic Mega Collection. Sonic Mega Collection. I, 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 I wasn't going to tell the kid I already had it on PS2. But yeah, <laughs> so the thing, the thing that kind of ruins it is that I knew for a fact Mike would just take it like eBay or something like that. Well, no, no, no. I do plan on actually using it on the Xbox, seeing as <laughs> yeah. my Mega Collection on PS2 has sort of been uh, scratched to bugly by now. <laughs> but yeah, and then, you know, we uh, said our goodbyes, tried to get a few people to join the forum. <laughs> which I think, I think only... I think, well, from since Summer of Sonic, we have gained quite a few members, but I, f- I only know for a fact that two of them were from mm. Summer yeah. of Sonic. Um, 
Yeah, it was a. Has any of you out there worked on Sonic? Let us know. It probably ran into yeah, it at one point. Well, yeah, I um, personally ran into Index Sonic. Personally, been on the forum. Um, he's a he's gonna be an Eggman. But yeah, good guy. Ran into him. Had a nice conversation with him. But it's, oh, and also something I found out from one of the um, people there is that apparently, and again, I want to say all all of the guests were, were great. Um, but I, th I think most people would agree. That, like probably like two of the biggest names one could get for a Sonic fan convention is probably someone like Ryan, it's probably someone like Ryan Drummond or Johnson Yu. Mm. And apparently from what I've been told, getting Johnson Yu for a possible um convention in, in the future is it is incredibly doable. I don't see why they didn't do it then. <laughs> getting crushed forty is less doable mm. apparently. But like um so like if if Johnson New appears next year, it's like holy crap, it's Johnson. I yeah. think if that happened though, he would just get like mocked, like he'd get like <laughs> molested by fans there. But like I, I I remember, I can't remember who I said it to, but I said like after the concert was done, and like everyone. Also, I just wanna, for me, I, I know I went um, T J Davis singing Kenny for Sunshine Escape, but another thing I loved was when during the day they had like um just like a DJ playing Sonic songs. Yeah. <laughs> When Never Learn turned on, literally oh, yeah. the entire Everybody room was just like, Can you feel life? Actually, no, it wasn't the entire room, it was like four or five of us in this group. No, I'm not joking. No, you know, it's, uh, I think we started it, but then by the time yeah. the chorus came on, the entire room was just like, Live and learn! Yeah, and then it was just us four again for the, <laughs> for the verse, and then the chorus yeah, came on again. I just, I just remember like thinking, the only thing that can make this day like uh, the best if at the end of the day the roof just like explodes open it's like a helicopter there so ropes come down and swinging from the ropes comes <laughs> crush 40 I'd be like that'd be insanely d dangerous but screw it that'd be friggin awesome when the crush 40 just blows up the house and it comes awesome. in and uh, that was pretty much it wasn't it after all the gifts were handed out at the very end oh, uh, we had the sonic cake sonic cake oh yeah oh also for those of you <laughs> for those of you wanting closure or the uh, Guinness Book of Records story. At the end, they actually someone beat the um, world record. Someone's mm -hmm. gonna be in the next set. The uh, someone beat it with 20 seconds, mm -hmm. and they were handed the the books they had with the Gamer Edition of this year. And at the end of the day, they were simply handing the bastards out. <laughs> yeah, they were so saying, "God, please take them." Please so take so them. I, I took about four copies. <laughs> eBay, eBay needs love. <laughs> We need that for all yeah. funds will go back into the uh, website naturally. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, Mike. I'm not sure if if you want to talk about something that happened that that the what what I was off getting stuff signed. You was off doing something as well. I'm not sure if you want to mention that now or wait for later. You have to remind me on that one, actually. Man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it involved get it involved every. I wanna, I'm trying to say about giving it away, but it involved every guest who was there. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? It was uh, basically, uh, we've now got a t-shirt signed of every single guest that was there. It included... Uh, Lee Brotherton. Lee Brotherton. It included Nigel Kitchen. It included... TJ Davis. TJ Davis and... Oh, the other one as well. Richard, Richard. And the other one. Richard Jock. Richard Jock. Ooh, Richard Jock is another person I met in the toilet. Call me. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have a t-shirt that, and I think we're going to be making, when we go back online, we're going to try, because essentially we got that t-shirt, we're going to be giving away some of the free stuff that was handed out. Mm -hmm. We have a oh. sign of the comic signed by Nitro Kitchen. Yep, and also on the way out they were leaving all these um, I Love Sega sweets there as well, so I managed to take quite a few of those as well, so we got some other prizes we're not, too. I'm not sure if those are still edible. We also, have a, <laughs> we also have a spare copy of the Guinness Book of Records 2008 that we're going to be handing out, although... How we're gonna d decide this? Probably we we'll worry about that when we got back online. But just know that when we got back, we've got them in storage. When we got back online, there's gonna be some contests to be had some prizes to mm. be won. Um, but yeah, Summer of Sonic was a, a, a great and a, like the bet. It was just a great day. It was just a, it was it was just nice being yeah, in a room where like you could just chat to people. But, like for once, you don't have to be ashamed to be a Sonic fan. <laughs> it's like. Because like one of the rules there was like no four kids, no arguments about the voice actors. Yeah. Because that's that's the like because guys, you, you, you gotta admit it. As I know, like most people who like subscribe to our stuff aren't that bad, but collectively as a group, the Sonic fandom is one of the worst fandoms on the internet. Just oh Christ, it makes you ashamed. 
What do you mean? It's all the whining out the voice actors. Yeah, I know. I'm Jason Griffith sucks. The wine driving the best. Although, I want to I actually say something right here, right now. Right? I guarantee you, if Ryan Drummond hasn't been quit right, and he said every line in those six exactly the way Griffith did, I bet like, not one person would moan about it. Yeah. If if Drummond had been like, huh, I guess being a princess isn't that easy, no one would have given a crap. Just because it was Griffith, seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's my piece done. About that. <laughs> I reckon it just goes back to what people are used to. Because, you know, it's what they epitomise as being Sonic. Because it's the voice actor that they're used to. And then when it changes, it's just too different for people to like it. Hmm. That's my theory, anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um... So, damn, this video is long. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um... But yes, some of some great day. I hope we hope they all will make a um they be another next year. Mm -hmm. If there is you can be sure we'll be there. We'll even try to arrange some, you know, proper promotion there. Hopefully we'll have a website open by then, but maybe even get ourselves on their uh, website board. Hooray! Yay! Yay! <laughs> that. Okay, so um we hope you've enjoyed listening to this mm -hmm. forty odd minutes of us and rambling about um the Some more Sonic, I hope you haven't forgotten that quickly. <laughs> the, the first ever real Sonic tank engine. There was one before though, wasn't there? I think they arranged one like a, two years before, but I think only like 15 people turned up. And maybe if I'm wrong about that, forgive me, this is, for, this is from what I remember. But I think this one was the first like properly organised mega event. Mm. And you know, Small Crib was about, you know, too many people in the hall and like short space can't yeah. hinder what a great day we've had more events but yeah, it was still brilliant no, you got a lot of time to talk please. to people please T.J. Davis singing Can You Feel The Sunshine that's all I needed mate right <laughs> <laughs> all I needed ok um, yeah, that about uh, bands it off uh, this is Torch signing off this is the uh, fastest thing alive signing it off and uh, I guess there's nothing left to say but Deek Whoa. Oh, my God.